اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دس از بک فضائل اعمال اینڈ وی آر ریڈنگ دی اسٹوریز آف دا صحابہ دس از چیپٹر نمبر ٹو فیئر فار اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ اینڈ وی ول بی اسٹارٹنگ فرام دا اسٹوری نمبر ٹین اینڈ دیر آر الیون اینڈ ٹویلو شورٹ اسٹوریز لیٹ می سی and that will conclude this chapter yes 11 and 12 so basically 10 and 11 and the 12 with the smaller stories but it's not very long so the number 10 story is remembering the grave and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam reprimands the sahaba for excessive laughing Sahaba are رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ are the companions of رسول اللہ Prophet Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم So when Prophet Muhammad صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم once came to the masjid for Salah Salah is the Arabic word for prayer He saw a group of people laughing aloud To this he remarked If you remembered death I would not see you laughing like this think of your death often because not a day passes without the grave calling out i am a place of loneliness i am a place of dust i am a place of insects when a momin is laid to rest in the grave the grave says to him welcome how good it is how good is it that you have to come to me of all people walking on the earth i like you best now that you have come into me you will see how well i shall treat you it then expands for as far as the person can see and a gate of janna janna is paradise is opened for him in the grave from this gate he can then experience the fragrance fragrance of jannah however so that was for a moment the person of a good deed a muslim however when an evil person is laid to rest in the grave it says you are not welcome here how tragic for you is your coming to me of all the people walking on the earth i dis- i detested you most now that you have come to me you will see how i treat you it then closes upon him so much that his ribs of one side penetrate into the ribs of the other as many as 70 serpents are then set upon him and they will keep biting him till the day of qiyama qiyama is the last day of judgment these serpents are so venomous venomous that if one of them was to squirt its venom on earth not a single blade of grass will ever grow therefore prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the grave is either a garden of jannah or a pit of jahannam and there is a note for the uh, uh, fear for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of utmost important importance as the basic and essential qualification of a muslim it is because of this that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam often remained in deep thought rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to advised us to think of death because it is of great benefit to the soul and we will continue to the next story about hazrat hanzala radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu's fear of hypocrisy hazrat han hanzala radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu relates We were once with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he delivered a sermon that caused our hearts to melt our eyes to flow with tears and which brought reality before us 
when I left Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and returned home to my wife and children, we discussed worldly affairs. I started to laugh with the children and joke with my wife. The condition that I felt when we were with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had vanished. I suddenly realized that I was not whom I had been. The state I was in when with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was unlike that which I was in with my family. I then said to myself, "O oh, Hanzala, you are a hypocrite." In a state of distress, I left my house, repeating the words, "Hanzala has turned hypocrite." As Abu Bakr radhiyallahu taala anhu came up to me, I said to him. Hanzala has turned hypocrite. Subhanallah, he exclaimed. What are you saying? Hanzala can never be a hypocrite. I then said to him, When we are with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and listen to him speak about Jannah and Jahannam, we feel as if they are present before our very eyes. But when we return home and are absorbed. in the affairs of our family and property we forget everything else this happens to me as well abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu said we then both went to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i have turned hypocrite o rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i said i mean the hazrat hanzala said when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked for an explanation I repeated what I had said to Abu Bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then explained, "I swear by the being who controls my life, if you could all if you could at all times maintain the condition you are in when you are with me, angels would shake your hands when you walk and when you are in your beds." However, O oh Hanzala there are times for this and times for that so there is a note that people need to tend to their needs eating drinking and seeing to the needs of our wives and children are also necessary for this reason the state of spiritual elevation occurs sometimes and cannot be maintained all the time one should not even hope to maintain it all the time because it is only the angels who can do this since they have no need to attend to they have neither wives nor children nor any concerns for earning a livelihood or anything else to do with this world while human beings cannot aspire for this on account of their worldly commitments yet the sahaba radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu were so concerned about the change in their condition when away from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they actually thought they had turned hypocrite when a person is overcome with love he tends to have a thousands uncertainties when a beloved son is away the loving parent will be perpetually concerned about his safety and well-being if the parent has to learn that the area where the sun is has been afflicted with a plague or that there is a civil unrest there only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how many letters or calls they will then make and this uh, we are starting the story number 12 and uh, th- there are multiple smaller stories and uh, stories about the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are all related to stories of the fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the last section of this chapter number 2 it is very difficult to cover all that is said in the quran and the hadith about the fear for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it should however be understood that the fear for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an essential step to all spiritual perfection Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fear for Allah is the root of all wisdom Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu used to weep so much 
with the fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he lost his eyesight. He once said to an onlooker, you seem surprised about how much I weep. Even the sun weeps with the fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a similar incident took place on another occasion, he said, even the moon weeps out of fear of fear of for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa once passed by a sahabi anhu, who was reciting the following verse of the Quran. فَإِذَنْ شَكَّتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانٌ This is taken from Surah Rahman, ayah number 37. And the translation is, When the sky shall split asunder and become red like hide. As he recited these words, the hair on his body stood on, on end and he nearly choked with excessive weeping as he said, Oh dear, what will happen to me on the day when even the sky will split asunder? Woe to me, Rasulullah said to him, Your crying has made even the angels weep. Ishabi is from the Ansar who once weeping after the Tahajjud Salah as he said, I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from the fire of Jahannam. Rasulullah sallallahu said to him, you have even made the angels weep today. Hazrat Abdullah bin Rawaha radiallahu was once weeping. When his wife saw him, she also began to weep. What makes you weep? He asked her. Whenever Whatever makes you weep, makes me weep as well, she replied. He said, the thought that I have to cross the bridge of Sirat, across the Jahannam, makes me weep. I do not know whether I shall be able to cross over or fall into the Jahannam. Hazrat Zurara bin Awfa was leading the Salah in a masjid when he reached the words, Faiza Nuki Nakur, Suratul Mudassar, Ayah number eight. When the trumpet is blown to signal the arrival of Kiyama, the day will be an extremely severe day. He fell down immediately upon reciting the words and passed away. His body had to be carried back to his house. Hazrat Hulayyad was performing Salah when he reached the words Kullu nafsun zaikatul maut Every soul should taste death And this is taken from Surah Al Imran Ayah number 185 He repeated the words several times until he heard a voice from a corner of the room saying, How often are we going to repeat these words? It has already caused the death of four jinns. It is written about another person who recited words, Waraddu ilallahi maulahumul haq. This is Surah al Nam. Surah al Nam. And ayah number 62. Then they, the souls, are turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their true master, when they will be judged. And upon, upon reciting the words he screamed, shivered, and passed away. There are so many stories like these. The famous saint Hazrat Fuzela Razila said, Fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads to everything that is good. Another famous saint, Hazrat Shilbi stated, Whenever I felt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's fear in me, I found a new door of knowledge and wisdom opened for me. A hadith mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I do not unite two fears in the heart of my slave. If he does not fear me in this world, I shall give him fear in the next. But if he fears me in this world, 
I shall save him from all fears in the akhirah, like the next, the life after death. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, all things fear a person who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while everything is a source of fear for him who fears anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Yahya bin Mawad, Mawad radhi Allah ta'ala anhu said, A person may enter Jannah only when he fears Jahannam as much as he fears poverty. Hazrat Abu Suleiman Darani, Ruziyallahu and I think this is Rahmat, Rahmatullah, Rahmatullah stated, there is nothing but destruction for a heart that has no fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah ta'ala will save from Jahannam the face upon which a tear from the fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drops, even though the drop be as tiny as the head of a fly. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentioned, when a Muslim shivers with the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his sins fall away from him just as leaves fall off a tree. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated, a person weeping out of fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can never enter Jahannam until milk goes back into the teats. Hazrat Uqba bin Amir once asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what the way to salvation was. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, hold your tongue, stay indoor and weep over your sins. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu once asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then she's the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is there anybody from your ummah, from your followers, who will go to Jannah without reckoning? Yes, Rasulullah sallallahu replied, the person who weeps when he recalls his sins. In another hadith, my dear master, Rasulullah sallallahu says, no drop is dearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than two drops. The drop of a tear shed out of fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the drop of blood shed in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another hadith states that amongst the seven persons who will be under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyama will be the person who remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in solitude with fear flowing from his eyes with tears, sorry with tears flowing from his eyes out of his fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in repentance for his sins. Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, one who can weep should do so and one who cannot should adopt the appearance of a weeping person. It has been reported that whenever Hazrat Muhammad bin Munaqid Munaqadir Rahmatullah wept, he smeared his tears over his face and beard, saying, I have heard that the fire of Jahannam does not touch those parts of the body that have been touched by these tears. When Hazrat Sabad Bunani Rahmatullah suffered from a disease of the eyes, his doctor said to him, Your eyes will be all right if you promise not to weep in future. He replied, what is the good of my eye if it cannot shed tears? Hazrat Yazid bin Mesara Rahmatullah says, there are seven reasons for weeping. Extreme joy, insanity, extreme pain, horror, pretense, intoxication, and fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A single tear shed out of the fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is sufficient to extinguish oceans of the fire of Jahannam. Hazrat Kaab Akbar said, I swear by the being who controls my life that I love to weep out of fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have tears flowing down on my cheeks more than spending a mountain of gold in Sadaqah. There are numerous other sayings of the saints and pious people indicating that weeping out of the fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in repentance for one's sins is very effective in attaining spiritual elevation. However, we should never lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, which is all embracing. Hazrat Umar Allah said, If it be announced on the day of Qiyama that all except one individual shall go to Jahannam, my expectation of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make me hope that I would be that chosen one. Again, if it be announced on that day that all except one individual shall go to Jannah, then my sins would make me fear that I may be that condemned one. <clears throat> it is therefore necessary that we should combine fear and hope together in our hearts, especially at the time of death. Rasulullah said, None of you should die without strong hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal was on his deathbed, he sent for his son and asked him to read to him the ahadith that induce hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his mercy. And with this, we conclude the chapter number two of the stories of Sahaba about the fear for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to be on the straight path. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.